Galapagos. From our living room setting, we offer personalized styling and wardrobe building at a price that you can afford. Style is your own personal fashion sense based on your mood and how you feel. Just bring that little special outfit and we will add that finishing touch. Whether you're a country club girl or maybe you're a fantasy floral or maybe you're a boho chic or maybe you're a goddess or maybe you're that personal bling. A little bling by Dell has the accessories that'll make you stand out from the crowd. Remember, it's not what you wear but it's how you wear it. Good morning, this is Don Hamrick with Chapman Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, Las Vegas' original Dodge dealer. Many of you might recognize Victor Valenzuela. Victor is the El Jefe to the Hispanic community. Our TV show, El Jefe de Cementos, has been running for 12 years with fabulous deals for all the community. Stop in and see Victor on El Jefe de Cementos' show and mention the Amy Joe show and receive a special gift. We'd love to see you here down at Chapman. Welcome back. You're watching the Amy Joe show from fabulous Las Vegas. And my next guest is a talented young man and he is on a mission. He is an artist who wants to put Louis Armstrong back in everyone's mouth and in their eyes. Wow. What a mission. Yes, yes, it really is. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what, what I'm supposed to say, because I'm sitting here with a beautiful Amy Joe, and you know I love the women, because uh, I've been married four times. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes to that question. Yes to that question, yes. Louis Armstrong needs to come back uh, on a world, a world scale. Yes. He's a fabulous artist. He was the father of jazz music here in this country. And he was born during a time that spanned 1901 to 1971. As I would say, horse and buggy to when man walked on the moon. Wow. Right, but that's a lot of history. That's a lot of history. And so, Mr. Anthony Brady, how did you just put your focus on him? What happened? I, I don't know. It might have been God sent. Uh, I was doing a children's show, mm -hmm. and they needed someone to sing Wonderful World. Ah. And it just came out of me. And uh, uh, it, was, it, it just amazed me. And what amazed me more than anything was that I was doing that show for preschoolers. Okay. In Chicago. And they knew every word of the song. Really? They sang it along with me word for word. It was amazing. That's These nice. are four and five. Some of them are just turning six, sixth graders. 350 of them out there. And they just all chimed in. Yeah. Which perfect. shows you how powerful the music and how it transcended over the generations. Yeah. Amazing. So where does your vocal talent come from? Um, church. From church? Okay. <laughs> a, a lot of artists started in church. And how, how old were you when you started? I've been singing since I was two years old. Okay. But I had no idea that the Louis Armstrong vocal was inside of me until maybe I was 11, 12. I used to just play with it. Okay. Because yeah, I loved those artists back then, the black and white movies, the whole concept. I, I thought yes. that was just beautiful. Well, I want to say something to our perhaps younger viewers that Louis Armstrong was an artist and he was a trumpeter. He was a vocalist. Most people would call him a balladeer. And he was in a lot of movies. He was a star. He was a comedian. And he really was considered to be one of the most influential artists in jazz history. And he's known most for his songs like the Star Duet and what you just said, What a Wonderful World. I can go to so many places and artist after artist always sing that song generally at the close and so is that something that you like to do as well well I would like to intermingle that song in the middle of uh, our musical piece I, I have a six-piece band here in Las Vegas mm -hmm. and uh, along with other songs that are prominent uh, Hello Dolly uh, uh, Lazy River a few songs that he sang from uh, Hank Williams, uh, Your Cheating Heart. Oh, 
okay. Sinatra music. Um, a lot of living to do. They, they, uh, Louis Armstrong sang so many different songwriter songs that I think that uh, uh, a great show would be just beneficial. And Wonderful World should be in the middle of that. Right in the middle of that. Well, guess what? I'm going to show everyone a little vintage Louis Armstrong just so they can see what a great artist he was. Take a look. Come on, folks. Everybody sing. Now when the saints... Go marching, in. go marching in, now when the saints go marching in, go marching in. Oh, yes oh, I want oh, to yeah. be in that number, oh, yeah. now when the saints go marching in, sing it again, now when the saints oh, marching yeah. in, oh, now when the saints oh, Oh, wow. I'm bowled over. And, and what I like about that music is it was perfect. It was good for the time that he sang it. And you look at it now and it's still good. It's not like, oh, that's out of date. So how do people achieve that? Music that transcends. You mean how do they uh, express it, sing it? No, how do they create music? Because you're also a writer. Yeah. Correct. I'm a, I'm a screenwriter. Oh, screenwriter. Okay, okay. Screenwriter. Uh, but I heard that you have a great voice and that you can sing. And we'd probably like for you to come up on a stage and do a little Ella Fitzgerald for us. Oh, yes. I would love to do that one day soon. And beautiful look. If you tell me the words, we'll sing some Hello, Dolly, before you get out of here. How about that? That sounds good to me. Okay. Well, one thing I do like about Louis Armstrong, and I think his life as a whole is really textbook for people today, because he overcame so many things. Yes, he did. He really had a very difficult life where his father abandoned the family at a young age. His mother got involved in prostitution. And I read that he was also arrested at a young age. Um, really because it was, they were celebrating New Year's and he shot a gun and they put him in jail. And I was just amazed at the things that he went through and still came out not holding grudges and not, no. you know, people could become very bitter about that kind of a life. No, it was his lifestyle where he lived. It was a, a ethical uh, mix, an ethical salad, a big gumbo of different ethnicities. And also uh, a big Jewish family helped him out during those years. He married a prostitute, by the way. Yes, and they had wife. a very turbulent marriage. And, and the other thing that amazes me is that he had such a big heart. Yeah. Because his cousin that was hurt from a fall, uh, that he took care of him all of his life. You really do your research. Well, yeah. you know, I really <laughs> do like to do that because I want people to know that Life is not linear. There are ups and there are downs, and we've got to go with those ups and downs. And, and he's a very, very good example of that. That's why I wrote the story. Uh, I wanted people to hear it through the narrated voice of Louis Armstrong, and yeah. it's basically his life and the history that was surrounding him. You mm -hmm. know, we had segregation on a large scale back then. Yeah. Well, it's like I tell people all the time, it's not where you start, it's where you're going. You go. And oftentimes we'll say, well, my mother didn't do this, my father didn't do that, oh, I lived in the projects. Stop right there. It's not about that. It's what are you going to do? And Louis Armstrong showed us what he could do. We're going to take a break. Can you give us your website so people can look you up and we're going to come back and hear some of your great vocals? Yes, I'd love to. It's called Satchmo is Coming, lww.homestead.com. Satchmo is Coming, lww.homestead.com. Thank you. All right, thank you, young man. We're going to a break, and when we come back, we're going to hear some more from Mr. Brady and his tribute to Louis Armstrong. We'll be right back.